Hi, welcome back to the Dr. Donovan Medicine Made Easy YouTube channel and the third video in this series on causes of red eye, in which I'm covering high yield information relevant to medical exams such as the USMLE, medical school finals and general practice AKT. If you enjoy this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I produce short bite-sized medical education videos every Wednesday and Sunday. In this video, we're gonna be focusing on this particular cause of red eye, as you can see in this photo, and that's scleritis which is basically inflammation and redness of the white part of your eye known as the sclera. And I'm circling the sclera on screen here, and that's essentially this area which I'm outlining in red, which is the white part of your eye. In terms of subtypes, I'm not going to go into too much detail because this video is designed to be a broad overview for the non-specialist, but there are two main types of scleritis. The first, which I'm going to outline here, is anterior scleritis, and that makes up about 98% of types. That can be further subdivided itself into diffuse, nodular, necrotizing, and there's also subdivisions of that. There's also posterior scleritis, that's much less common, and you can see that in this photo here, and that's scleritis basically affecting the back of the eye. In this photo here, you can see some disc swelling associated with the posterior uveitis, but essentially, the take home for this video is that anterior scleritis is much more common, as indicated by this figure here, and that posterior scleritis does exist, but it's much less common. So now let's go ahead and take a look at causes of scleritis. Well, scleritis is often linked with an autoimmune disease. However, sometimes there's no known cause. Although scleritis is linked to things such as arthritis, which causes joint swelling and stiffness. There's also lupus that it's associated with. There's also inflammatory bowel disease, so things such as Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis. There is Sjögren syndrome that causes dry eyes as well as other symptoms. There's granulomatosis, and then there's other things like connective tissue disorders, including scleroderma. It can also potentially be caused by trauma to the eye, and much, much less commonly, and I haven't listed it here, but it can sometimes be caused by parasitic or infectious causes. So let's move on and take a look at symptoms of scleritis. Here you can obviously see this redness of the sclera and I've included this because it's quite a useful photo. So symptoms I've listed down here. First one that we're gonna talk about is pain. So when you ask the patient to move their eye, they might experience significant pain. That's important because in another condition, which is a very similar name called episcleritis, you're much less likely to get pain. So in an exam question, if they're asking you about a patient with a red eye and when they're moving the eye, they're experiencing pain and you've got two options to decide between one being scleritis, the other being episcleritis, remember that episcleritis is much less likely to be associated with pain. You can also get tenderness of the eye, as we've already talked about and you can see in this photo, the redness of the sclera or white part of the eye. This sometimes is described in exam questions as a purple hue, and I'm gonna go on and show you this in a photograph on the next slide. You can also get blurred vision, tearing, and extreme sensitivity to light, which here I've written as a medical term is photophobia. Let's take a look at that purple hue in this photo here, and you can see that coming through the white of the eye. You've also obviously got this redness and the increased vasculature around here in what normally should be the white of your eye. Let's move on now and just take a brief look at diagnosis and treatment to finish the video off. Well, if you've got symptoms of scleritis or you think your patient has and you're in primary care or family medicine setting, make sure you refer these patients urgently. They need to see an ophthalmologist as soon as possible. And that's important because without treatment, scleritis can lead to visual loss. So I'm just going to put an exclamation mark here because it's really important and underline that, that you remember that. During the exam, the ophthalmologist is likely to look inside and outside of the eye using a special microscope called a slit lamp. They'll also ask the patient about their overall health because remember, if we go back to this causes slide, scleritis is associated with lots of other systemic conditions. They may want to get a series of bloods on the patient and that will be obviously up to the clinician who is assessing the patient as to what bloods they decide to take. In terms of treatment, well, Scleritis needs to be treated as soon as possible and treatment is going to vary depending on the type of scleritis, but for a general overview of what treatment could include, things such as non-steroidal anti-inflammatories that can be used to control pain and inflammation, so think of things such as ibuprofen. 
Remember, if a patient has got gastric disease or gastric ulcers, you need to be careful when you're giving non steroidal anti inflammatories. You may want to cover them with some gastric protection. The other form of treatment is steroids. Now, steroids could basically help to control inflammation. And then also think about what's underlying or causing the scleritis. So if the patient has got rheumatoid arthritis, does their rheumatoid need to be addressed? And that can be given things such as immunosuppressive drugs, so drugs that usually weaken the response of the immune system when the condition is severe. In very severe cases, surgery might be needed. And that can help repair the eye and stop further loss of vision. When scleritis is obviously caused by the other disease, the disease also needs the treatment to control symptoms. Keep in mind that despite treatment, scleritis may come back. I hope that was a very helpful and useful video on the third cause of red eye in this series. Please go and check out the other videos on this channel. If you haven't done so already, please remember to subscribe. And I always really enjoy hearing from people who've watched the video. If you found it useful, please leave a comment in the comment section below. And until next time, thanks for watching and bye.